Hello, my name is Zhong Liu, Flow Ninja, and today I have a video that's not about Flow, it's actually about Power Apps. Um, this one is to talk about a component that I've written, it's a Power Apps component framework, component, uh, and it exposes one of the browser APIs for GamePad. GamePad is the API in the browser to talk to your controller devices. Here I have an Xbox uh, One controller. Um, yeah, so basically I exported the controller gamepad API via a PCF component so that we can use it, use a controller as input within any standard power apps. So I want to show you how this, that is done. So this video, think of it as an introduction and a quick demo on how to get it all set up. Um, very happy to answer more questions and do a follow-up video about you know but i think a lot of fun is this is uh this is going to be pretty fun if you want to use it to build little games for uh for this holiday break you know maybe if you're doing some power apps with your kids it would be super cool to be able to build a game that you can control with gamepad devices in fact you can control with two gamepad devices uh, so you can do a kind of a versus game or a co-op game uh, and then run it through the through any browser in your console so you can run the power app through the edge browser in your xbox one and then play this on your tv so super cool super cool for your kids to see hey i could build this app and then i could play it my app uh, on the xbox and you could do that within 20 minutes 10 minutes maybe okay Let's get started. So firstly, I'll quickly show you Gamepad API. There are several um, tools, I guess, people that do little demos. I uh, find this one called Gamepad Tester. It's pretty cool. By default, the browser will not broadcast that it has a Gamepad. You have to be listening to it. And then when you touch any of the controllers, you see, then suddenly the browser will receive the Gamepad API update and then it will tell you what's happened so if you see as i touch this controller it tells the browser knows exactly what i'm doing pressing the shoulder buttons and how hard i'm pressing them uh, and so on and it could do this with up to four controllers um, that's the the, the gamepad api can support up to four controllers and there's this number called the index so you see index zero index one index two um in a pc a laptop may be easier you can wirelessly pair these controllers uh, but you can also use a cable so so my particular one i'm using a usb cable that's connected this controller to my laptop um yeah yeah my laptop doesn't really have a second usb so i'll have to pair one but they all pair to the xbox Anyway, you just have to believe me. So all the buttons work. You can see them all work, including the select and start. Uh, all the directional buttons are over here as well. The shoulder buttons as well. And then the trigger buttons are super interesting because based on how hard you press, it creates this radian of zero to one. You see the B7 and B6, okay? Uh, similarly with the axis. So the axis is the zero and one refers to the first axis. So from negative one to positive one on the X, and then from negative one to positive one on the Y. Uh, the axis two and three, so zero one is this first one, two and three is the second one. Okay, and one more point I want to mention is when your controller is at rest, these numbers don't really reset back to zero, zero. So in general, um, treat the first little bits of numbers, anything under maybe 0 0.1 as a dead zone. See, this one is 0 0.09. So treat it as a dead zone where you just don't consider it being pressed. Okay? Yeah, otherwise it's super annoying. Like, your game, your character keeps kind of slightly drift because the, the, joy, the sticks are not at the true zero. Okay, one more thing is, uh, you can test vibration and this is vibrating okay so the gamepad api provides a way to tell your controller to vibrate and you can specifically target different controllers so imagine i'm shooting a button 
and my uh, kid got hit, then his controller will vibrate. That's super cool. All right, uh, the component that I built is a JavaScript component, but if you are if you're keen to read the code, it's here in this GitHub that I've just published. It's public. Uh, I've done one release, which is the latest build, so you can just grab the solution zip file. Okay, so that's the PCF component. Once you have the solution zip file, let me show you where to go. So pop over to makepowerapps.com in your default environment. Uh, go into solutions here. And then uh, import, import a new solution. You can then select uh, the zip file. Okay, when, when you download zip file, you may have to flag it as trusted uh, because typically files, yeah. So let me just, yeah. Let me just quickly do that. So if you click and download, oh, I've already got one. Let me delete that. That's the old one. So typically, you need to bring out the property panel, and then just say this one is just unblock that. Okay, that makes it a bit easier. You can check the source code in it. It's just a component, uh, no virus or anything. Okay, next. Um, yeah, import. So you get a solution called GamePad. If you look inside it, it has one component called uh, long name, uh, GamePad component. Okay, it's a custom control. Now, once you have that, let's pop over and make an actual app. Okay, so come over here, go to new app, uh, new canvas app. Let's use the white screen so we can. Um, we're mostly thinking about big wide screen spaces, but uh, as if you're familiar with responsive layout, you can use that as well. I'll make a responsive app. All right, first thing is we're going to go to insert. We're going to go to custom, uh, import new component. Pop over to code. And this will quickly have a look at all the different PCFs you may have in your environment and make them available to you. Uh, the GamePad component is that one. I have a few other ones I've written in the past. So import the GamePad component, and that's going to create a. Uh, right, that's gonna um, import the component here. So if I go to add new here, you see this code component this is a new one, and then you could just tick that, and that's gonna add the custom component to this to this app and you see that the custom component takes a space it's kind of an invisible component if you come here you can see it exists here uh, it's kind of invisible um what will we do let's at this point quickly do a save uh, we're gonna call this um monsters monster Gonna be green, and I really would like a monster API. Uh, monster logo here. I don't have one, so we're just gonna call it maybe that. That's uh, that's our monsters. Cool. So let's save that. All right. Let's pop back to here. Okay. So um. When even as even on the screen, if I start touching my controller, you'll see information start to appear in this uh, component. So the component is really by default it's in debug mode. This is quite useful if you're trying to work out. Hey, I'm pressing buttons. Which buttons are being pressed? You can see the numbers are changing, the arrow directions. Which ones are those? Uh, the axis, left and right axis, as well as the index. 
uh, this is index zero. Okay, so um, if if you have multiple devices or maybe you're connecting your controller through a dock to your laptop, it's possible that your controller is not index zero. So to switch that, uh, pop over to the component. The component has a bunch of um, properties, but just pop in and look at index. So index is a uh, pad one and pad two with the index. Uh, by default, they are zero and one, but you can switch them. So if my controller happens to be, um, you know, two, like, so index are zero. So maybe the controller happens to be one and three. So you can pair them. So pad one will be one and pair two will be three. Okay, so this is a situation when your laptop picks up multiple docks and it mistakenly thinks the dock is a controller. I've seen this happen. Uh, only once actually, but yeah, it's happened. Now, if in your actual game, you may not want this debug over your screen. So um, pop over to the visible component. You can, you can happily, you can make this false. So Power Apps will hide that component. It becomes an invisible component. It will still function just fine. It's just invisible. All right, let's do a quick, um, let's pop back to true because for our demo, it's still easier if we can see what the heck is what's going on. Let's quickly add an icon. And we're going to change the icon to Well, maybe we shouldn't have called the monsters, but I'm just going to make it a happy face. Okay? Happy face. So maybe the game shouldn't have been called monster. I was looking for a monster alien kind of logo. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah, so let's go with happy face. And we're going to need a few variables. So let's actually quickly define those. Um, for the simplest, just on the on start. Let's just set a few. So set um, monster x is zero. Set monster y is zero. Okay. And if we look at this guy, it changes. Okay, so set the faces X and Y. I don't know whether we should make it a face. Maybe, maybe it's a scared face. What's scary? There's a controller. Maybe I should use that as an icon. Um, the monster is a clock because we all know that's the scariest thing. Now, uh, next is, so the gamepad component will output uh, changes. So it is possible to use changes here on change and then put your code in there. I prefer using the timer instead. So if I just come and add a timer. And then we can set this timer up. So consider this timer to be the game loop. And we need to do a few things. Firstly, let's make the game loop actually pretty short. So let's say 50 milliseconds. It's going to repeat. It will auto start. Um, yeah, that's about it. And then one more, it needs to do stuff on end. So on the timer end. Okay, and on the timer end, we'll do a few things. We'll do very simply. 
we'll say if game had component one and we're gonna just for safety pad one okay, connected so if it's connected we're gonna do stuff okay we're going to say um if game pad component one dot um so there are these four com four kind of shorthand uh, properties the zero x is the first joystick so first stick the zero zero is joystick and then one x is the second joystick one x one y so if you wanted to detect the two uh, sticks separately this is a way to do it so we want this to be um more than that or It's zero. And a little bit more, we actually want the absolute value of this because it can be negative. Okay, so uh, just very quickly, we have this little formula that says, um, yeah, and let's just quickly add a few more. So we're going to say set the monsters x to be. The monster x plus um, the difference from here. Okay, and then set monster y to be y. Plus y here. Okay. Now let's uh, quickly see this. So as I'm, oh. let me double check. Yeah, if you see this timeout value uh, and it's less than 100, it's not going to work. And that's to do with how often the components outputting back to Power Apps. Uh, I find anything less than 100 is just too small. It doesn't get picked up. So you see, as I'm moving my controller, the, the uh, face is now slowly moving. Now... Uh, so this game is running on what 50 milliseconds so every 50 milliseconds it increments very slowly by only you know um, zero point something so we could give it a bit of uh, um, let's make that uh, 10 10 times that just to give it a little bit of speed So you can see now it's moving along a bit more naturally. I uh, could almost imagine this to be a snakes game. Okay. So if you have two controllers, wire them up. Control two different icons moving around. 
uh, you can kind of play with it. Anyway, this will do as the first intro video. Uh, leave leave a like and subscribe and let me know what you think. Um, next, I think that there will be a few more videos from here. How do you work with the the buttons? How do you work with the pressure? How do you work with vibrate function? Uh, all these are pretty interesting. How do we think about creating an array of bullets that you can fire? Um, how to do lots of trigonometry. How do you rotate this uh, symbol? And so on. So uh, let, me, let me stop here and then uh, we'll continue in the next one. Bye-bye.